take a tough cut of meat, slice it thin, pound it if you need to, run it through meat cuber, hit with a hammer, marinate it, grill it, donezo. No pre-cook, no sous vide, you don't have to measure anything. It's maximum surface area, maximum flavor, maximum easiness. It's just good stuff. Here we are today. Beautiful, in my home. It's sunny out, it's lovely. There's grapevines in the window. Thank you for being here, you know? Okay, so I feel like it's been years and I'm always pushing steaks and I'm always pushing ultimate steaks and I'm always pushing perfect doneness. Cooked through, it's pink all the way edge to edge. Sous vide makes that happen. The steaks are cut perfectly square. It's a very American, very Western cooking thing. What we don't talk about enough or we don't see a lot of, especially thinking like Western cooking is just like cutting something thin with a knife and pounding it with a hammer, popping it into a pan or a grill. I think you see a lot of it in like some Italian cooking, French cooking, you know, scallopini type stuff, carpaccios, where you just have this really nice thin piece of meat. It's all surface area. It's all texture. It's all flavor. You can't mess it up as far as the doneness because there is no doneness. You just hammer it on like, charcoal or wood fire grill until it's like crispy and dark and you season it and that's it, right? When it comes to something simple like this, this is an easy win. I'm gonna walk through carne asada, how I like to make it, but keep in mind, you can use this technique for any tough cut. Brisket flat, chuck eye steak, flank steak, chuck short ribs, rump roast. Like it's quick, it's easy, it's dirty. You already have all the tools. You can use a hammer, back of a beer can, hot, tippy tip of a pepper grinder and just speed it up, whatever. I'm gonna make carne asada here with skirt steak. You gotta say skirt steak's a weird piece of meat, man. Looks kind of weird to me, but let's make it look good. <clears throat> Check out this old hammer I have. <laughs> That's serious. Looks like a toy, but it's not. This is no joke. And look, it's got somebody's initials on it. JB, whoever that is. Who are you, JB? Where are you? What was your story? Let's get started. So it goes something like this. Maybe some of these extra pieces, whoop, I'll take the side, but first I take my skirt steak, kind of do like this, kind of partition it out a little bit. Go here, go here. Here's what I like to do here. I could even get a longer, longer knife for this if I want. You know, just get your crazy knife and use that. This is like anyone who's filleted a, a fish, it's the same thing. So the, the back of the knife, you put the pressure on the spine of the knife here. It's on the back, not like this, but on the back part. And you put the pressure there and you drag through that way. So you see guys at those, you know, carnicerias, those like butcher shops, they do this in like two seconds because they get through a million pounds like boom. I'm like, mm -mm. I'll watch my fingers on that. So this is all you're doing here. You get to that point. For me, if you really want, sometimes I like a little bit of that, that silver skin here. You can get rid of it and cut it all off if you really don't want that chew. I like a little bit of that chew sometimes. You can take it further. Ta-da. So, part of this is, this is it, this is a great piece of meat. Skirt steak's great, but it's still got some chew to it. So I'm opening it up. This is with the grain and the muscles, just like you would see uh, like a brisket flat or something. Then any of the, not just the high spots, which is fine. So I'm making it like paper thin. So it's, increasing the surface area and also making it thin everywhere so it's gonna cook real fast. But I'm also literally breaking up collagen. So any big muscle grains or strands that are really long, really chewy, I'm literally chopping them up. Like you can kind of see it when you do this, but if I'm hitting this connective tissue, it's getting, it's breaking, it's breaking, it's breaking. I'm gonna go back to my other knife. My, my knife, a knife of my life, my favorite knife of my life, Bill Burke knife. I love you, Bill. See, open it up. Even that, for me, that's too thick for if I really wanna do carne asada, that's like a quarter inch thick. I wanna be like an eighth inch thick. So when it hits the grill, it will 
tighten up and thicken up a little bit because some of those proteins are still gonna tighten up. I could treat this as one piece or two pieces. I like when you go to the carniceria or the real good carnesada place, sometimes they do strips, sometimes they separate it. Up to you. We can separate it. Makes like managing it a little bit easier on the grill. You know, it's like eighth inch thick, it's thin. I'll just keep cruising through these guys. Especially Tough Cuts, they all have tendon, you know? It's real connective tissue stuff right here. If you look at the muscle, it's like what anchors the muscle. It's the toughest part of a muscle. But that's what breaks down into gelatin and makes it real juicy and succulent. You won't break that down into succulent gelatin with mechanical tenderization and a quick cook. That's something that can only happen with moisture, high heat, and time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. I'm going for like that maximum surface area that I can put on the grill. It's all surface area, it's all crust, it's all charts, all flavor. It marinates instantly, it seasons instantly, it cooks and grills instantly. It's like a blank canvas of heaven, like whatever you want to put on it. Okay, let me get started here. So basically it's orange onion, lime, a little garlic, a little jalapeno, I like a little cumin and salt and pepper. Maybe even no pepper, just salt. Let's drop the pepper. Let's just do salt. I like to take a mandolin. For those who don't like a mandolin and they're scared of them, that's okay, I totally understand. You can just use a knife, okay? But this is why I like a mandolin for this sort of stuff. Look at that. Mm, I'm gonna even go thinner. I'm gonna take it to the limit here. Mmm that this is like what I'm going for. All this rind, this pith, that's all good stuff. I wanna, I'm gonna eat it. And when we go to the grill, that'll actually char up and be like a little bit of salad too. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Some lime. We've talked about this. We've got a whole bunch of content and mandolins. Go to justice.com, learn how to not cut your fingers off and make thin stuff real fast. Same thing, onion. You don't need that much. If we wanna do jalapeno, this is like, if you don't mind the spice and you want a little bit of heat, just go for the whole jalapeno. If you don't want any spice, don't add any jalapeno. If you just want jalapeno flavor and no spice, just don't do the pith and the seeds. Do like just the green bits, you know? That's probably plenty. Woo! I can tell that's a hot one. And then, I don't need a lot of garlic for this. I just like a little bit. Paper goes away. That's kind of like the little supply. I've got cumin. I know there's a million little spice grinders out there. Again, this is an old school coffee grinder. See, when you're at my house, you get to see my tools. This is, I'm, this is way better to me than like a me. That's it, done. Made for coffee, but I use it for all my spices. And yeah, you can adjust it. You can go super fine, super coarse, whatever you want, you know? Fresh cumin. Love it. I'm gonna back up for a second, because I'm like, want every layer to be all marinata. Okay, a little salt first. You know, when we talk about seasoning a steak or a roast, the bigger the hunk of meat, the more you can put like salt on the outside, right? Because you have less and less surface area, the larger the mass or dimension is of something. Something's all surface area, take it easy on the salt, just like that's enough, you know? You can add a little bit more later, but you don't need a lot. A little cumin, and then, you know, the easy stuff, so. Orange. Some of that salt is gonna like start to suck out some of the uh, juice and the citrus and the onions too. Then some of these guys. Mm, 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 mm. Jalapeno. A little bit of garlic. Do it again. Even a little bit of cilantro. A little bit of beer. Get the juices going a little bit. Help melt that salt. Everything will start working a little faster. Now we just gotta hit it on the grill. 
So the grill's gotta be super, super hot. You want red coals or your gas grill maximum, right? Each one of these should take like a couple minutes, no more. If it's taking longer than a couple minutes, your grill's too cold. If you get to this point and you're not ready to eat, your guests aren't ready, you're not ready to serve, don't grill. Let's do it. You can't smell it, but I can. Man, this is good stuff. The only thing you gotta think of here, grill it fast. This could be a cast iron pan though, or it could be under the broiler. Cast iron pan is actually really good because it doesn't lose any juice and in all those drippings, they caramelize and they caramelize and they caramelize. So sometimes a cast iron pan for carne asada to me is actually a better thing than the grill, but it's grilling season. So I'm outside, super hot coals. So I'm going for like dark char. You ready for this? Mm. Oh yeah. But you can see it's already cooking almost all the way through. Oh yeah, that's what you want. So I'm gonna do a little rotate remind. Rotate remind. Ha <laughs> ha Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm talking about, man. Simple. I've got a knife here, but you know when I got carne asada that's done well. Mm, I don't really need a knife. Oh my gosh. Some lime. And then even this stuff, just go back onto it. And then cilantro. Then you hit that cowbell. Supper's ready! Juicy. Mm. Oh my God. Look what Nick did. Everybody just stop for a minute and look what Nick did. He just like, oh, just kind of like busting out a little avocado slice. Oh my God. Nick. Mmm. If you're used to steaks and you love steaks, you love your tomahawks, you love your New Yorks, you love your tenderloins, you love your ribeyes, that's great. You don't need to change any of that. But you probably love it because of the flavor, the texture, all that sort of stuff. Try a different angle. Just go for that like tough stuff. It's got so much flavor and it's got so much flavor because all these are working muscles. Thank God for carne asada though. Man, it's good. Mm. See you guys in the next one. Mm, 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 mm.